This is Ross from Haken and Novena. You're watching Heavy New York. What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at Warsaw Concerts in Brooklyn, and we are here with Ross Jennings of Haken. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, it's yeah. so great to have you here. So the newest album is Vector, uh, correct? Uh, do you just want to like talk about like how the record cycle for this has been so far now that it's been two years? Could we be expecting some new Haken fairly soon or anything like that? Yeah, it doesn't feel like a new record anymore. Yeah. Um, we've been playing, yeah, the tour cycle's been a good two years, like you said. Um, these have been the most fun songs to play live, though. So um, we've t taken that on board, seeing what's working and... Yeah, the writing process um, is underway, and we're really looking forward to developing that stuff. Awesome. Um, going forward, yeah. Yeah. One thing I was curious about is because, you know, when you compare like Vector to like The Mountain or mm. Visions or something like that, I almost feel like every record kind of in a way plays by its own rules. Is it fair to say that you guys have always liked to experiment with your sound and take a new approach to everything? That's fair to say. Um, I mean, we've, we've never been shy to um, put our influences on our sleeve, but there are so many influences um, and tastes within the band, so that just spills through into the writing naturally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Do you need to hear music in order to come up with lyrics, or could maybe a lyrical concept ever determine the outcome of the music? Um, typically, we draw lyrical concepts from um, external sources, such as movies or life events, you know. Um, with Vector, it's, it's carried on the strand of um, the, the psychological element. It's, it's drawn from movies such as One Flew Over the Cookie's Nest and Kubrick films, uh, Clockwork Orange, things like that. So, um, oh. Yeah, it, we draw from pop culture <laughs> mostly. So. That's fascinating. Yeah. Do you like try to maybe engage the listener into what you're singing about or is it the music also open to interpretation for a listener to take things in his own way? Oh, no, absolutely always open to interpretation. Um, um, put a lot of our own experiences in as well so obviously that becomes something that people can connect to um, mm -hmm. you know use drawing their own life experiences and incorporating those into the, the meanings you know yeah that's, when you're that's important uh, it's important that it's multi-layered for us you know yeah when you're singing about pop culture like do, is there like research are you like writing about your interpretation of it or like your analyzation of it or is it like very formalistic like you're singing about this um, I think it's a bit of both, um, like half and half. You know, you've got to you've got to put a, a human element to it as well. Um, but also, um, if we're talking lyrically, uh, there's a lot of research that has gone into, especially the concept in Vector. Uh, okay. So um, yeah, it's important to kind of be uh, intellectual about it, but also somewhat. Um, organic as well yeah did yeah. you like go into the making of vector with like a preconceived idea like this is how this is what we want to sing about or did were you writing music and it kind of just happened like organically like you just stumbled upon no we had a clear idea from the start absolutely um, this this concept plan was mapped out before any music was written actually so yeah um, yeah so. Is there like a chronological element into your music? Like in order for a person to like get the, the concept of track number two, they should listen to track number one? Like are the songs kind of in a way like a movie in itself? Um, act, I mean, typically with concept records, that usually is the case. Um, with Vector, actually, we wanted to make sure each song stood on its own as well. And that's quite a tricky thing to balance. Um, so it can be listened to as one narrative strand, but also you could pick out you know, a cell divides and just listen to it as a single. Um, I think that's uh, kind of reflective of how people consume music these days. Um, the attention pan, uh, span we find is quite short. Um, so a lot of bands are looking to um, the single format, you know. Yeah. And, and that's kind of, you know, we've taken that as well So um, and used that. Yeah, so it's probably best that the listener doesn't listen to like an, a, a, a Haken record on shuffle in a way, right? We like to think you could, but um, to get the full experience, you know, taking that, uh, going through that journey is also uh, really rewarding. Yeah. So. And then there's also, of course, the element of playing it live. Like, I mean, of course, you know, unless you're playing the album in full, but like, you know, there's fans who want to hear stuff off the mountain and stuff off of like visions and stuff. So like, is maybe the experience of execution of those songs different playing live when you're putting it into the set list? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, also, um, we have to sort of tailor our sets to different situations. 
and different set lengths as well. Like for example, we're on tour with Devon Townsend right now and some of our set lengths are like 30 minutes, 40 minutes and um, yeah, just choosing, selecting the, the tracks for that short time span is, is like an, an art in itself. So um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. But yeah, but yeah I mean, it's the, the, different, um, the different songs and how they're portrayed live and how they're put together with the different singles we have that's that's doable as well yeah it's got to be like difficult like especially when you're playing this material live i've always said it's different than you know simply seeing the band so Mm -hmm. is there maybe a similar energy in uh the creative process as playing live or is it a completely separate art altogether (laughs) it's definitely a separate art um we're quite formulaic in the studio but obviously there's there's a certain element of releasing uh, a passion and energy and a performance as well so um, we can let some of those really technical elements slide a little bit in in lieu of you know giving people a good time you know yeah um so yeah it's, it's definitely a different mentality yeah yeah here comes the most difficult question of the whole interview all right how do you know when a song is done it, a song is never done yeah i get that never. all the time it's <laughs> such an easy way out you could do better than yeah. that <laughs> um especially with the recording process like you just got to draw a line at some point um because you've also got six uh, very opinionated people writing together yeah. and different opinions on when what's finished and what's not you know yeah uh, so you just got to draw you got to draw a line at some point and say yep yeah, that's this is it beauty of deadlines right yeah for sure (laughs) yeah now kind of going back to the pop culture element of Haken because like one thing I find you know you mentioned that you also invest your personal element into it so Mm -hmm. how is like do you like pick this pop culture elements that you guys personally relate to like I feel like one flew over the cuckoo's nest has resonated with a lot of people Mm -hmm. and stuff so I could maybe like you have to identify with it before you choose to sing about it yeah, and I think that was evident in the Affinity campaign as well. Like a lot of us were very um, inspired by the '80s pop culture and the visual uh, stuff that sur- uh, surrounds that. So, um, yeah, and that that passion translates through the art that we're doing and kind of making it relevant for the modern day as well. So, yeah. but yeah, there's definitely a core like um, passion for that. Yeah, yeah. and I. So, yeah. And I asked it a little bit before, but do you think for the other members in the band that helps them lay down riffs and rhythm as well? Could like you know th- those pop culture elements also determine the music itself? Like if there were no vocals on the record, could maybe like the instrumentation also give a clear representation of the story? Yeah, um, uh, like D- Diego, for example, works a lot on the sound design, and like again, referring to the Affinity stuff, we had a lot of. Uh, source material to draw upon to create those that soundscape you know from the, kind of the Transformers soundtrack for example was like a huge the Vince DiCola stuff from the 80s it was like a huge influence on the stuff he was creating for Affinity so. and um, that's been the case on all the records as well like just yeah. you know, taking those pop culture signifiers and kind of incorporating them into something new yeah Yeah. and there's got to be like an interesting form of commentary on it as well right like because when you're writing about pop culture it could be either your experience with it or you could be calling out something in pop culture or something like that right so i'm sure there's many different angles to approach it yeah it was just about um reflecting on a time which made us feel warm inside you know a a nice sense of nostalgia when we were growing up like in the late 80s yeah yeah there you go Mm. so before we go I'd like to thank you so much for your time we're going to talk about some Novena stuff soon but uh, is there just anything with Haken you'd like to promote could we be expecting some new Haken very soon Um, we'll see we'll see can't announce anything just yet but um, we're always writing so yeah watch this space all right fair (laughs) enough you'll tell me when i turn the camera off (laughs) most likely everybody we are here with ross of haken pickup vector if you haven't already this is alex from heavy new york we'll see you next time